Hey everyone, this is Trevor Miles, he, him, his. Dean Richards, he, him, his. And today we are talking about how your beliefs changed. Dean, who controls you? Should it be someone other than myself? Who do you take guidance from? What are the times when I don't need guidance? How do you know when you don't need guidance? Have you always had guidance? Do you know who to ask for help? Could they actually help me? What do you believe in? What do I know? Are you a flip-flopper? Is that a bad thing? And with that, we are going to jump right into today's topic. The last prompt was, do you flip-flop? We have a lot of celebrities that we love. We have known people, community leaders, family members, whomever it may be, people of prominence who had a stance And then all of a sudden, it looked like they were switching it up. It looked like they completely just believed or felt something else. And some of us might have saw that as like inconsistent. You're flip-flopping. You you hop on the coattails of whatever mission you need to for political reasons, let's say. I challenge us to think about what does the evolution of of a person look like or the evolution of an idea? Can't we get new information about something later on in time that completely shifts our perspective of it. And is that a bad thing? Do you have to hold on to old ways of thinking about something because that's what you knew for so long? Could that way of thinking have been damaging? That's what we really want to talk about today. We want to give you all some examples of moments where we realized, you know what? I was thinking one way, there are other options available. I know that there have been many points in my life where I was speaking one way about a group or there was a time that I thought my ideas were absolutely the best in the space. And uh, yeah, those beliefs were challenged. My stance was challenged. And so I am very uh, feeling vulnerable, but also excited to bring some of that into this space for everyone today because I want everyone to also think about that for themselves. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, everybody kind of finds themselves at one place when they're younger, and sometimes they have an opportunity as they get older to realize that place they were at when they were younger was not beneficial to themselves, to those around them, or just to the world. And I think for me, that kind of happened. You know, when I was younger, I grew up around a bunch of uh boys, boys who are kind of rough and tough. You know, we grew up in tough neighborhoods and sometimes, uh, I'm not excusing it, but we, as a product of our environment, we kind of gained tough skin. So we'd throw words that were triggering out when we were talking about other people. Um, We would use some terms that are considered offensive and politically incorrect by today's standards. Whether we were talking about members of the LGBTQIA plus community or whether we were talking about individuals with mental health disabilities or things along those likes. Were we evil kids? No. Did we understand the ramifications of what we said in the larger world? No. Did we live in a world where it was, for all intent and purposes, more acceptable? Yes. I'm not excusing it. It was wrong. I look back today and I think some of those meaningful things that, harmful, excuse me, harmful things that I said, I asked myself, how would I feel if my son were to say them? And I wouldn't be okay with it. You know, I've, I've listened to my sometimes, sometimes when he was talking to his friends and I hear him say words like 
the R word, uh, and which re is in reference to one's mental health. Uh, and I told him that's not that's a very harmful word. You know, that's something that you should not say. It actually is very damaging because it's belittling the person or people who are, you know, on the spectrum of mental with mental health issues. And it is something that is actually taking away the importance and, and seriousness with which people should think about mental health. And it's creating the stigma around it and making it cool to like use mental health diagnoses as the butt of a joke. And that's not cool. And I, I always try to get on him when those things are used in my space and I can hear them. Mm. And I, I would like to say that I'm thankful that I've come to a place where I realize words matter, words hurt, words can do irreparable harm to the soul and that it's not okay to use them. And I try very hard to carry myself differently. Um, so I don't know when that time was, but I know there was a point at which things clicked for me and I realized my belief that that was okay is not okay and I need to change my actions. That makes me think about a couple years ago when I met you and we were doing the uh, Public Allies program. We might have mentioned it on an earlier episode that everybody should go listen to. Um, just listen, all of them. But uh, we were in a program called AmeriCorps and Public Allies is the most rigorous program there and we had so many different program trainings and we did things like the Privilege Walk. Uh, we did exercises like... Um, I call it firing squad. That's not what it is, mm -hmm. but I where you you, you sit in the room and you kind of take feedback from everyone, um, and it's critical feedback. And so it's it's tools you can use, but you cannot you know combat with everyone. You have to take it. Uh, but those things help you grow. And throughout that program, learning that I have to work with this team of people, learning that some of the ways I was speaking were not okay. I used to refer to some groups as those people. I learned in that program. Hey, check that. I was around 24 when I learned that lesson. I got a whole new idea of the word queer at that time. Uh, I That was a time my belief changed because I always saw that as a slur. I always saw it as something very harmful. But it was something that I noticed many communities or many individuals will use to identify uh, with. So that's when I found... I found myself not being as hurt by that word when I saw so many people were adopting it and it wasn't a harmful thing. It didn't have to be a harmful thing. Not saying we should take every slur or every word or every crazy nuanced thing and make it like, a, oh, I'm going to put this on a t-shirt and march down the street. Not that, but I noticed for me, I didn't have to feel like someone in the space was coming to attack me when I heard it. That's not all that that does mean and that's not all that that can mean. I don't have to give that particular word that strength, but that's for me. And so I know in the public ally space, I found myself um, speaking a bit. I always felt I had the best ideas. I always felt that, uh, that, that what I was saying was thought out, thought through, probably the best moves for us to make. And we were doing a beautification project in one of the uh, city's blighted communities. And yeah, I quickly learned my beliefs changed here that I don't always have the best ideas in the room. The best ideas are created by you giving your best and then other people in the space giving their best. And then you formulate something out of that. And some parts of it will get shot down and some parts of the ideas will marry. But it's when everybody comes to the table. You can't always just have the end all be all great answer that the world needs. You don't have that knowledge. You don't have that skill set. You don't have that background. So... My belief was challenged in that way because I realized, okay, I'm an intelligent individual. I know things, but I don't know all the things. And it's okay that I don't know all the things. This is where community happens. This is where collaboration happens. And that's something I very much started learning around 24. Um, and I learned about safe spaces. That was another kind of, not to say belief, but that was a way that my thoughts about spaces had kind of enhanced. Um, I never realized the way that I was speaking at some times could be harmful to people on the bus or people at the bar or wherever I might have been at the time, um, people in the classroom. I just never noticed, hey, while I'm okay with this way of speaking and my friend right here is okay with that, someone with an earshot, they might not really like what you said. And yes, we could get together with the girls and Kiki, but everybody's not with all of that. And should I be doing that like, you know, at the transit stop? Maybe not. Maybe not in line at CVS, you know? 
I can so. appreciate mm-hmm. that. I've I've been not to steal your thunder, but mm-hmm. I've certainly been out with people who are like mentees and we've been in public places where like we'll go get something to eat and then I hear them throwing around the N word mm-hmm. with an A on the end, mind you. Um, but that's just part of their natural linguistics and I part of me like cringes and I'm like, huh, this is not exactly going to this could have an inverse reaction. This mm-hmm. is not the space or time for that. I'm, I'm not trying to, I don't want you to feel like you have to change who you are, be true to yourself, but be a little more cognizant of the environment you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could mm-hmm. actually backfire, not only have the adverse reaction in the sense of like, you make people uncomfortable, but you could actually, you know, unfortunately we live in a world where when you speak a certain way, you're treated a certain way. Mm-hmm. And that can lead to things like, Something as simple as people giving you dirty looks from that all the way to somebody spitting in your food because they don't like how you carry yourself or worse. And so you have to be more cognizant of those. And it's a real struggle to but I acknowledge that it is a real struggle to like be true to yourself, but also respectful of the environment you're in. That's something I I won't say struggle with, but I choose to not stifle or smother my queerness, if you will, my homosexuality, the way that I choose to present, the the extra flair that Mr. Trevor carries. I just choose to not hide that so much so I can drop a lot of girls all throughout a sentence. Uh, I can say a lot of other words. Someone checked me on this a while back because everything is referred to as, oh, B, what you doing, B? Or hey, B, you know? And then I had a female friend tell me, but not with me. And I was like, oh, Mm. you're right. I feel that. And that is something we will do all day again with the girls, but that's not what all the females want to hear. And so I had to kind of check myself on that. Um, It's so hard to be authentically you, but then realize, hey, there are other people here. There are other people Mm. present here. Mm. We have to care beyond this sentence. Did the sentence really need that impact? Did you have to say the N word in that sentence that badly? Like, did it need it? We knew what you was going to say. Say them boys or whatever you was going to say. We knew what you was getting at. But when you do it, especially when we're out in public, it just is so easily written off as, oh, that's them gays. Mm. That's them black kids. Up, oh, that's them white folk. Like the way we speak out in public, it, yeah, people tack those stereotypes on us and we feed into it because we insist on speaking the way we speak. I challenge everybody to learn different ways of speaking, not to say, oh, be ready to code switch at any moment. No, be ready to be professional I'll at be, any moment. I'll be cracking up while I'll be telling my boys, man, say my ninja. Mm-hmm. <laughs> say that instead. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Be a little bit more gentle. We know what you're after and we know your heart. We know you mean no harm. But those individuals who could maybe give you a potential future job don't know you like that. Mm. So watch your mouth. And that is definitely something I had to learn how comfortable I'm being in some spaces. As colorful as I want to be, the way I've spoken has not always been, mm, I won't say widely accepted, but just not the best way that I could have been speaking in those spaces. And, um, oh, case in point, just came up with a good example. There were a couple years ago. I was in another underserved area and I try to watch language like that as well. I use blighted community earlier. Now I'm saying underserved, but y'all know what I'm getting at. I was in another rougher neighborhood in my city. Uh, And yeah, I was approached by a prostitute and I was with one of my students actually. And so this was, this was really interesting because I first am young myself I don't think I give off the appearance of having like a whole lot of expendable income, right? I don't wear Rolex. I don't carry a briefcase. I don't drive a really nice car or anything. So whenever this prostitute approached me, um, he was very sweet, but the way he was talking, the way how he's like, oh yeah, my phone is dead and this is what I need to get done. And you know, you cute, da, 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 da. And I'm just like, in my head, right, all the all the um, negative thoughts, all the stereotypes, all the negative things I could think about this individual. Why can't you get a job? How dare you be out here? How dare you approach me like this? Don't you have any decency? You see my student standing right here who's clearly a minor. What's going on? And I'm trying to get this student home, right? Like, it was just a lot going on. And I remember... After that experience, I went downtown to go chill with the ballroom kids and I start talking really negatively about this individual. And we were, you know, we were kikiing or whatever, but then they heard the the words that I used to describe this trans person. And they was like, they 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 looked like they wanted to fight. They looked angry. They felt some type of way about it. 
and I did not realize what I was doing. I was offended, not hurt, but I was a little bit offended. Like, um, excuse me, I'm your age. How are you going to approach me on some money stuff? Like, I'm not paying you to da 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 da. You know, never was my thing. That's not my gig. But I was speaking about somebody's friend. I was speaking about somebody's sis. I was speaking about a human being. And that was not cool. So it gave me a different, completely different vantage point on watch what you're saying when you're saying it wherever you are because you don't know who knows who and who is whose cousin, period. Pittsburgh is small. Right, Pittsburgh is small. And nothing bad happened. I just got a whole bunch of them looks, right? A whole bunch of them whispers around me, that extra stuff. But I wasn't watching my mouth. I wasn't watching my mouth. And beyond that, take it a step further. Why even carry those thoughts? Why even carry those negative thoughts about somebody in that way? Instead of feeling some type of compassion for this individual, I decided to say, how dare you in my mind, right? Like, oh, I, oh, you must be outside and have to do that. No, let's break it down. This trans individual cannot get regular employment because of systemic issues in our stupid society. First off, they cannot get ahead in life because there's individuals who were like me thinking the way I think. Right. And so they're not accepted to just walk down the street and live a normal life, what we consider to be normal life. And I'm not trying to say a heteronormative life because I'm gay and I feel I live a very normal life, but they can't live the life I live because of how they choose to show up in the world. And that's not fair. And I was very much operating with that hat a couple years ago as don't bring that over here. That was not cool. And I love being able to call myself out on that today. And I do not in any capacity consider myself to be a savior, holier than thou. But in that moment, I definitely placed my value above another human being who clearly is struggling. And that was not cool. And I'm calling myself out on that. And I challenge people to call themselves out on moments. They put themselves above somebody else. That person who's on the street begging for a dollar, don't put yourself above them. You do not know that story. I do not know how hard this young man worked to try to get a job, but it just so happened that night he happened to see me on the street and thought, well, maybe this is my opportunity. I can't judge him for that. I cannot even look at him no crazily than that because that could be any of us. It is definitely Corona sister outside. So... That could be any of us tomorrow for real. So I just, I, I'm so glad that I that I had the energy that I got from those ballroom kids because that, it, it, changed, it changed my perspectives. It changed, it changed. I didn't stop and think about the struggle that individual had before I cast that judgment. And it just, it really, it really opened my eyes up. That was a couple mm. years ago. Mm -hmm, that opened my eyes up for sure. Mm. Mm. Wow. I appreciate that because you got me thinking about what people need. Uh, or at least what their perception of what they need is. You know, you you needed a lesson at that moment that you didn't even realize you needed, and then you got it, and now you're reflecting on it, which is a beautiful process to happen. You know, everybody isn't as fortunate to, to have those moments where they realize that. And I think for me, I was also fortunate to realize what I needed. I grew up someone who uh, had a mother, a single parent, only child. It was just me and her. Um, didn't have other, technically didn't have family in the city of Pittsburgh or the state of Pennsylvania. Well, I'm sorry, the city of Pittsburgh. Um, they were f the rest of the family was further away in the state. And my mom did a good job of not sheltering me, but not sheltering me at the same time. You know, even though it was her and I, and we had to be conscious of what we did, she never told me that you have to follow the, my path or follow this path in a certain way. And that is just across the board. One of the ways in which that happened was religion. My mom never directed me to a specific religion and said, she always said to me, figure out what makes you happy, what makes you clear on a higher power. I want you to really think about, is there a higher power? If there is a higher power, what do you call that power? Does that, is there an organized religion that you have to pay reverence to said power under? She never got to me. I happened to kind of fall into the faith of Christianity because of a mentor of mine, well, soon to be mentor of mine, who was connected to my mom. And I started going to church. I went from church, went to a specific church for over 16 years I was an active member I was involved in everything that you could do every community program you could be running at the church I was involved and I formed a close relationship with the minister there at the time 
and he was very much a mentor towards me. As I said, single parents, I didn't have a male figure in the household. In around 2006, that individual retired and moved to a monastery in another state. Uh, another pastor took over, and her, the pastor and I got along, but we didn't have the same relationship as I did with the previous pastor. And so that got me to thinking about what is my relationship with the church now? And as time went on, um, I found myself kind of not feeling as connected to the faith or, or not necessarily being as engaged with the practice. You know, I, I allowed other things to take place of my Sunday mornings beyond church. And eventually I realized that what I needed when I was younger, when I had another minister at the helm of that church was a mentorship. And I like that I got out of that mentorship guidance, as well as I got connection to a congregation of people that created a safe space for me and a warming space and a, a space that was diverse in many different ways, religion included. And I needed that. I don't think, if I'm being honest, I so much needed the connection to actual religion and the religious text. I just was looking for a higher power and understanding of what a higher power could look like in reverence to a higher power. Yeah. So I believed while I was young that like I was really into religion, but as I got older and my minister moved away, I realized it wasn't so much the religion, it was more so the environment that was created and the people that were in that environment. And that's what I needed at that point in my life to help strengthen me and prepare me for whatever was next. Uh, yeah. Mm. So I referred to the individual earlier as trans, and that is not entirely true. Uh, at least from what I remember per our discussion, that is not true. Uh, this individual did sit down at the bus stop with my student and I, was waiting for the bus with her, and this individual was talking to me. And from what I remember, this individual uh, was a cross-dresser and dressed up to get extra money at night. So not a trans individual. And I caught that actually in thinking about it because I mentioned, um, I kept saying he. I don't know what this young man's story was to meet me that day. No, if he was dressed up, then she presenting as a woman. So she, trans. And I misspoke on that. So I just wanted to educate everyone. If a trans person is presenting as the gender that they are presenting as, that is probably their pronoun. You should still check and ask. But she approached me because she had a wig on. She had the fake breasts. But again, she was very, 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 very male. And we were sitting down talking and I'm not talking about nobody's transition at all. No, we were speaking and he dressed up. He was he he liked to dress up and he actually even I remember at one point mentioned um, me getting a hotel for them and X Y Z and da 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 not to get too gratuitous that's not what we do here creatively curious but I just wanted to clear that up this individual was not trans from what I understand um, and from my recollection this individual was a cross dresser however I do remember being very offended at that time and that does not excuse the way I spoke about this individual but I remember where that all came from and that ignorance there we have to check our ignorance when we bring that into the space and Mr Trevor don't have no problem checking and his ignorance. I'm going to say all day, I don't know the answer. Or, oops, I said this, my bad. And own that, own that, because that helps you grow. That helps you understand. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. You mentioned a point that I actually want to touch on. Um, sometimes, you know, you know when people are from a place that, let's use Jamaica as an example, people speak Patois in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Patois is not another language. It's a dialect of English. With Patois, with speaking Patois comes an accent. I've, you know, dated somebody in the past who was Jamaican, and it was interesting to watch when she would she would speak English with a accent as if she lived in Pittsburgh. 
it was interesting to watch when she got mad or really excited about something, her the accent of Patois would come out. And so I use that as an example to say, it's always really interesting to think about our childhood experiences and not to go off on a tangent, but the things that happen in your childhood are deeply influ- influential in who you are and who you become. And so I have to be honest in that I made a reference earlier to using words that were not kind, that were triggering, that were harmful when I was younger. And do I want to use those words today? No. Do I use those words today? No. But I'm sure that there are some things that, words that I used when I was younger, or ways that I said things when I was younger that I still have the possibility of doing today. Uh, And because I don't realize how harmful they are so I'm going to challenge myself to continue trying to unpack what are some things that I say today or ways that I speak about things similar to ways I things I said when I was younger or ways in which I spoke about things because I could still be using the same language and it's harmful and I never actually stopped to realize or was never open to learning that things that I said then and things I say now are harmful so I appreciate your acknowledgement of that Mm-hmm. Um, reference. Thank you. Yeah, I as well. I will continue to read, ask questions, talk to individuals, and talk to individuals from different communities. We speak about a lot of communities a lot of times and never go speak to them directly. It's like, oh, I'll just watch this TV show and however they're presented on the show, just whatever. Like, no. Do you have trans friends? Do you have friends who cross dress? Do you have queer friends? Do you have straight friends? Do you have friends who are this religion? X, Y, Z. The list is long of whatever. But um, in addition to, in addition to reading, or addition to watching something on TV, or addition to your your own self research, right? That secondary research, primary research. Everyone take it back to school. Go to the source. Go to that community if you are able. I understand. You know, we all in the house right now. But there are ways to get the business done. There's ways to get it done. Everybody's on a Zoom conference. Everything is digital. You can get it done and go straight to the source to find out. Hey. How should I speak about this community when I'm talking about this community? What do you want to be referred to as? What is your name? What is your pronoun? X, Y, Z. Um, and that was something I very much, it was on my heart to clear that up. Uh, and I, I still am, I, I love your point of how we can go through something as a youngster and, and really bring that into adulthood or sometimes go through something as a youngster and completely ignore those signs and then re-exhibit that behavior. Mr. Trevor, got another example of where I didn't pay attention to the lessons I was learning. I was in college and I interviewed homeless individuals, Mm. um, street people. They are in the street. Uh, Everybody does not like to be called homeless. Uh, And technically, some of them are not homeless per se. I interviewed one lady, literally interviewed, like I had a notepad and I sat down and wrote things. She, um, She was living in her storage unit And she had a master's Mm. degree. Uh, The one individual I spoke to, he moved here from out of town for a love interest. And that ended up not working out. And so she kicked him out. And now he is underneath a bridge, for instance. And so it's not all, oh, I gambled my money away and I lost it all. Some people just had a a bad hand of life. And um, that, that opened my eyes to how easy it is to end up outside. I remember, this is two years ago, I went to uh, Washington, D.C. for a performance. And I was walking around with my friend. And I was like, how come all this furniture is outside in the parking lot? Like, this is really nice stuff. And he was like, yeah, people just got evicted. They get evicted at the beginning of every month. And I was like, nah, uh I mean, I know the rent here is a lot, but like, come on. And he's like, no, like, the rent here is a lot. We are in Capitol Hill or whatever the neighborhood is called down in D.C., um, you can get evicted easily. If, you, if you're not paying your rent, if you're not on time, you got to go. And uh, I was just like, wow, these people have jobs. They have, and I'm using these people again, but you know, these individuals, they have jobs. They have careers. They have degrees. They, they made, they're in D.C., so like, not to say you made it. Some people are born in D.C., obviously, but a, that's a very transient city. So a lot of people do move into D.C. for the work. Y'all got evicted? Like, wh- where are you going to go now? What do you do now? And so it's such an easy thing to have happen to you, to be homeless. And so I bring up that story to say, seeing so many people outside, 
trying to find health services, trying to find some type of temporary housing, trying to just be happy. And some of them actually choosing to be homeless and happy. That blew my mind. There was one individual. He wanted to be outside. He did not like the way our system is. And he said, you know what? I refuse to pay a landlord every month. I can save all of my money and be right here and just be as happy. And the individuals around me are actually safer than when I was living in that neighborhood over there. And these individuals around me actually are real people because we are here at this level. And when we're meeting down here at this level, there's not the embellishment. There's not the she, she, foo, foo-ness of the world. There's no, oh, what label do you have on? We are here. We are together. We support each other. We look out for each other. He chose to be homeless. And I was like, wow, wow, completely changed my mindset about what it is to be homeless. And homeless can look like you're staying over a friend's house, but you don't have an address. You technically are homeless. That is legally homeless. Like you have somewhere to be. But the government don't got nowhere to mail you. So on paper, you homeless. And that's the thing. And so I, I, I'm I, just, I'm frustrated with myself in real time. But I, I enjoy this. I enjoy sharing this moment with everybody. But I'm frustrated with myself that I, I was 19 and got these lessons from real world people. I sat down on a man's mattress on the north side to talk to him and to be in those type of moments. And then later on in time have an individual come up to me and I judge them in that way, not understanding what led them to the street, not understanding why they were asking for money for whatever the exchange was. Uh, That was a lesson that I just didn't pay attention to and that was not cool. So I'm calling myself out a second time. I'm not going to beat myself up the whole episode, y'all, but I'm just, we have to pay attention to those lessons because I was given that lesson and still chose to judge later. Not cool. No bueno. Es no bien. We don't do that. Like, When you are shown something, your higher power, your universe, a sign, whatever, pay attention to that. Um, Treat people the right way because that would feel like crap if you were that person downtown with a Dunkin' Donuts cup, shake, 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 shaking it, and everybody's just walking by. You don't even see you. That would hurt. That would hurt. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge you. Um, Mm. I know you. And I say this out of love, and I'm, I'm really curious. You just explained that you didn't get the lesson, so to speak, between 19 and 24, because you repeated a very, you repeated yourself in terms of how you spoke or looked at someone in a negative light. There are people, and I'm not saying this is you, but the reality is there are people in this world who make a mistake, and they acknowledge that mistake publicly so that they can feel good, but they don't really really intend on doing the work to change themselves so what do you offer for our listeners because i feel like i'm on this journey with you as do as our listeners what do you offer to everyone not and not that you owe them but nonetheless what do you offer here and now verbally what do you commit to to actually change instead of acknowledge your flaws and then keep on going feeling good about yourself because you acknowledge what was wrong but you didn't really fix it I appreciate that push, and I'm glad that we have this type of platform here at Creatively Curious, y'all. But you know, I'm going to push back all day. Just a mm-hmm. little bit. I'm going to clean up sure, some of that sure. for me. For me, uh, I'm not moving forward feeling good from it. I'm moving forward feeling vulnerable from this moment. I'm moving forward feeling like, wow, you weren't always a great person, and you've always considered yourself to be a great person, and you go on stage and people clap and applaud you and come to you for knowledge, but you're not all the way there. You have your shortcomings. So I'm checking myself every day, looking at those things, those character defects, and thinking, is this how I would want to be treated? How can I move forward in a much more productive manner? I very much today have a better idea of a higher power. I heard you mention religion earlier. And I just like to believe that everybody and everything is a child of the universe. So I equate you to being some, I, you're me. You are me, right? The pet that I'm taking care of, same life as that I have. That fish is not more important than me. I'm not more important than my little fish or my frog Moesha. Y'all, I just got a frog named Moesha yesterday. Girl. So I, I, I just believe that anything that is here is all of us and treat it as such. And I'm trying to learn as an older person now to slow it down. I still go pretty quick, but slow it down when I'm thinking about what someone's story is. When I have an idea made up of who they could be, where they came from. Oh, I got you figured out. Look how you drive. Mm. I already know you. Mm. I know your story. No, I don't. And I actually do don't. To some degree. Mm-hmm. 
I actually really don't know your story. I don't know what led you to this moment crossing the street with me, you know? And I have to remember that everybody is showing up just as beautiful as they can in that moment because that's what my raggedy tail be doing on some days, showing up just the way I can because this is the strength I had for this day to get right here. I have to give other people that. Other people deserve that. If I'm asking for that, I have to give that to other people. So that's my commitment to continue to give that to other people. They're showing up as beautiful as they can. Please meet them where they at. You don't have to tolerate everything now, girl. Come on. Come on. Boundaries, girl. We're not going to do that. But give them that grace. Can I tell you something? Okay. I planted that seed on purpose. I know. Uh, you and I are friends, clearly. We talk outside of this podcast and we talk about things that aren't meant for the world. Mm-hmm. And I kind of threw that bait out there because I knew I had a feeling. I didn't know what you would say, but I had a feeling you would say something similar to what you did say. Mm-hmm. Um, because I have a lot of respect for your acknowledgement of that and that journey. And, and you and I, as I said, have talked about that offline. Um, people know the performance, Trevor. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there are some people who think he's just putting on a show. He's playing a character. He's doing a role. That can't be the real Trevor. Like, Trevor is perfect. Or at least they start to believe. They be, They eventually believe that Trevor's a certain way when that may or may not match your reality so to kind of peel back the layers I was excited to plant the seed to get you to peel back the layers of no this is actually what I think about when I walk away from these situations and I'm a real human who does reflect and does care and I'm not perfect and I'm still growing so give me grace let me give myself grace and let me know that none of this is for show I'm too old to be doing stuff for show even though that's my profession, that's not my real personality, my real heart. So thank you. And I thank you for that. Yeah, I don't like walking around ignorant. I do not like walking around not knowing the correct way to navigate some situations or even earlier we were speaking a little bit about pronouns. I don't enjoy not having all of that information. And yes, again, there are secondary sources to, to find those things out, but it's so much different to sit with an individual of a community and get that information from right there. Because... Everybody's still approaching it differently. Some individuals that I know who are trans will take any pronoun you throw at them. That's way different on the other side of the, you know, so I'm just, I just, I don't like feeling ignorant. I don't want people around me to be ignorant. And step one, if you, if you oops, call that out. Hey y'all, I just oopsed my bad. And then hopefully the community you're surrounded by, Trevor, you good. Thank you for acknowledging that. And then y'all move forward. It don't got to be no big thing. And you know what? Also... If somebody is hurt by what you have said, you have power to say, ouch, to acknowledge the oops. Mm-hmm. Because the person might not always realize what they did. Doesn't excuse it, but make sure they understand, hey, you hurt me in this way. They that, can do that. That's a tool we learned in public allies. Ouch, oops. That is the most gentle way to say you hurt me. I'm sorry. I acknowledge that. I apologize. Ouch, oops. Implement that admit when you mess up we gotta admit when we mess up and not from a place of like pride and not from a place of like no you messed up say sorry to the room and yeah if i if i messed up definitely anyone's ears earlier i apologize to the room i misspoke on that individual i definitely just moving forward i want to learn to mitigate harmful thoughts about people because that's just a reflection of how you think about yourself that's Mm. just a reflection of how you're beating yourself up all day oh dang i ain't accomplish enough things oh dang i ain't get this many people to come to my show oh wow that last post didn't get this many likes like that's just you talking to you and you 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 putting that on somebody else so don't do that you need to stop that all the way around so i'm working on all of that for sure for sure i'm working on all of that that's so star that Y'all, we done for today. We got to (laughs) be. Yeah, it's been a minute for this episode, but I'm enjoying all of it. And I hope that you all enjoy it. And I look forward to you listening to it on anywhere where you get streaming services. You can check out our podcast. Please, please like it. Download it. Give us a five-star review. Whatever is applicable. Help us grow this. Come on and... I'm going to say a positive affirmation. My biggest belief that has changed is that I have to remain the way I was. That's not true. I can be a better version of me. Period. Bye, y'all. Bye. This has been a Trevor C. Media production. 
Thank you for listening. You can find more Trevor C. Media content on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or wherever streaming services are available. Please keep following our journey.